As the world's population is increasing, we need to find ways to meet this demand without destroying the environment. We need to find new ways of producing and consuming energy, and we need to move ourselves away from a dependency on fossil fuels. Around the world, scientists are working on innovations to address this global energy challenge, like here in Boston, the famous innovation hub. They're taking action to make the world a cleaner and better place to live. This transition to 100% renewables is possible. But what if we could accelerate it? I'm Paul McManus, and this is the Bright Minds Challenge. Global science company DSM and its partners are committed to 100% renewable energy. And with the Bright Minds Challenge, they're looking to lead the transition to the low carbon economy. I'd like to welcome Rob Van Leen, Chief Innovation Officer at DSM, and Hugh Welsh, CEO of North America for DSM. Rob, if I could ask you, tell me a little bit about the Bright Minds Challenge. The Bright Minds Challenge is a continuation of an initiative that we started in 2015. Uh, it's called uh, Science Can Change the World. And, and for that initiative, we created a movie where we celebrate what we call the unsung heroes of science. And today we're looking again for new heroes and we will help them uh, scale their solutions together with the people inside DSM, but also with our partners. All right. So what is it you're looking for? We're looking for uh, solutions in renewable energy and specifically in the field of solar energy and energy storage. All right. And you think these ideas will come from postdocs and scientists at universities and around the world? I hope so, I'm sure actually, but uh, I think uh, we would also be very happy with um, uh, inviting people from startup businesses uh, as long as they have solutions that are what we call uh, patent ready mm -hmm. um, and uh, that together with our partners we can scale up. So uh, we invite people as of now and then it will be a very open process. Uh, we invite the general public to vote. That will bring us to a short list uh, somewhere early next year. And from that short list, a panel of experts will select the top three. And in the end, uh, after some coaching and so on, the winner will be uh, announced in June 2017. Hugh, if I could turn to you, what is the winner going to get? Well, the top three winners will get commercial, technical, marketing, and mentoring support from DSM and its partners in this endeavor. Um, the first place winner will get 500 hours. It's worth about $100,000. Second place winner will get 250 hours. And the third place winner will get 125 hours. But it's more than just those three who will qualify as winners. Everybody who makes a submission will have the opportunity to perhaps get some support from DSM and its partners in promoting their solution. And you know, that will be great uh, for everybody. Mm -hmm. yep. And so is it just scientists that you're looking for that can no, participate it's, here? It, it's not just scientists at all. In fact, we'd love for the general public to help us find those scientists that offer these solutions and encourage them to make submissions. And the general public as well will have an opportunity to vote in the finals. Mm -hmm. Terrific. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite another guest, Emily Riker. She's CEO of Greentown Labs, a partner of DSM in this program. Emily, thanks so much for joining us here today. As CEO of Greentown Labs, what is it that you're looking for? What's the reason that you're joining into this initiative? Well, Paul, thank you for the question. So Greentown Labs is the largest clean technology incubator in the country right now. And we are truly excited to be part of the DSM Bright Minds Challenge because it fits so well with our mission to help entrepreneurs to solve the world's biggest energy and environmental challenges. We believe that DSM, who has provided our entrepreneurs with re resources and other means of support, access to experts, that should really be available to a broad range of entrepreneurs around the world. And we're really passionate, passionate to be able to support entrepreneurs and clean technology startups who are solving the world's biggest challenges. And we believe that that is the way that we are gonna mitigate the climate change problem. So honestly, we're just happy to be a part of the DSM Bright Minds Challenge because it's really an opportunity to turn ideas from scientists and technologists all over the world into reality. 
We have more partners involved in the Bright Minds Challenge. They couldn't all be here, so we have a short message. Getting creative around affordable energy is a key challenge for our planet. And Accenture works with the World Economic Forum and the UN on how we deliver better affordable energy to the people of this world. When DSM launched the Bright Minds Challenge, this became a natural and obvious fit for us at Accenture to actually work on finding solutions that will make a difference to the world. My name's Jeremy Leggett. I'm the founder of Solar Century, which is a solar solutions company. We're the largest installer in the UK, but we also work in Africa and Latin America, nine countries, and we're active on all scales from residential roofs right through to solar farms. Projects like the Bright Minds Challenge are really vital for large corporations intent on being leaders like DSM is to help out uh, smaller organizations, organizations starting out in vital missions of uh, saving the planet. Sungevity is supporting DSM's Bright Minds Challenge because the Bright Minds Challenge is really about spreading solar and storage and making new breakthroughs to make clean energy happen sooner, faster, better, and engaging the best minds in that exercise. We are involved in the Bright Minds Challenge because we want our network of bright young minds to really focus on some of the world's biggest problems. So if you are a young scientist, if you're excited by the power of business, if you are excited about what we can do to help the environment, at a time when it's going through so much change, then I urge you to get involved with Bright Minds. It's great to hear from the other partners. Now I have a question for the three of you. What does success in this challenge look like to each of you? Rob, if I could start with you. Sure. Um, well, DSM is really committed to tackling the climate change problem. And we believe that uh, with the combination of the uh, solar energy and the energy storage, we will be able to take basically carbon out of the power grid. Um, so that is what we are aiming for. So we, I would say success would be when we have found the scientists, help them scale, and then of course help society get to the zero emissions economy by making that transition from fossil fuel to renewables, and therefore society will benefit from this challenge. Hugh, how about you? It would be allowing DSM and its partners to bring solutions to scale and commercialization quicker than they might otherwise. It's just not the right thing to do. It's a tremendous business opportunity. We look to help others realize that business opportunity as quickly as possible. Emily, your, your opinion. Yeah, well, I think both of these answers were truly inspiring. So I'll just add that I think success is Working with a large company like DSM and having them intimately involved in bringing ideas from scientists and engineers to life that can really impact the climate change problem. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add a, a follow-up question if I could. Um, are you looking for breakthrough science or is this science that is really ready to go to market? I would say it is science that at least has some form of proof, you could say a prototype that we can then scale because that is what the partnership will bring. Uh, many people in this, this partnership have experience in scaling stuff, which many of the early companies and scientists at universities don't have, and that's what we will bring collectively. So entrepreneurs and scientists, which are very close to market, looking for that help in scaling are the, the primary partners for you in this challenge. Exactly. Exactly. Terrific. Thank you. Great. Rob, thank you so much. Hugh, you as well, and Emily for being here today. Up next is Vladimir and Kichow, two scientists who are working on the frontiers of innovation. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks so much for being here. Vladimir, if I could start with you. Why is it so important to find new solutions in renewable energy? It's a great question, but uh, the right one to maybe ask would be to ask, uh, what does energy do for us? And one uh, simple answer you'll come up with is that the more energy a human consumes, uh, he or she likely lives in a country with a higher human development index. For well-being, we need energy. Uh, the more energy you use, the better schools you have, the better health care you have. So that being said, in the United States, we consume uh, over 350 kilowatt hours per day per person. 
in poorer parts of the world that can be as little as one or a half kilowatt hour per day per person. If we can elevate everyone to the level of what United States is using, well, that would require, roughly speaking, three to four times the amount of energy pres presently we use. And if that's desirable from perspective of better lifestyle, healthier living, uh, more prosperity, well, then we need to come up with a resource to do that for us. It can be a carbon intensive resource, or it can be a carbon free resource. And a carbon free resource is certainly uh, much preferable. Well, you've painted a very broad landscape about what the problem is. It's very large and complex. Uh, many challenges and struggles for people looking to bring solutions to market. How do you think the Bright Minds Challenge might help scientists and entrepreneurs uh, overcome some of those problems? I think what's most important about the Bright Minds Challenge is to recognize what are the true issues that we need to answer. Is it indeed provision of more energy or provision of more energy that can be adapted in the right regions of the world? And as a result, looking at the developing world in particular is a really challenging thing to look at. Asking questions on how can a new solution reach a very remote village and actually be utilized despite the fact it cannot be repaired. What are the functionalities and formats of such technologies? And we need all of those solutions together to move us to that carbon-free economy, as you say. Absolutely. There is not a single solution that will be answer all of the questions all at once, but certainly there are some dominant ones to look at. Well, given, given that background, what's your message to students and researchers and scientists who are working in this field? Well, keep your eyes open. Uh, keep your eyes open to understanding of what do the regions poor in energy really need. The solutions that seem adapted and fit for us might not be the ones that are naturally the best ones for those developing regions. That's a very interesting story about the challenges on the developing world. Tell us a little bit more about the challenges in the developed world. Absolutely. The, in the developed world, the challenge is making sure that the new technology we introduce matches the costs and the price of the electricity that is pro already produced. So it better be that uh, solar wind generated electricity is cheaper than the present coal and natural gas electricity. As a matter of fact, as more and more solar is provided, the costs will keep dropping down. And so being able to project way into the future, and by way I mean five years away from today, would be a very valuable exercise to work on. Indeed, the costs need to be very, very low. And that is absolutely achievable with today's renewable energy technologies. Yeah, ter terrific answer. Chi Chao, uh, if I could turn my attention to you for a moment. Uh, you've been working in this field for some time as a, as a researcher and, and now as an entrepreneur. Can you share a bit of the story of your, your, the challenges and struggles that you face as you're bringing your technology to market? I've been working on a new battery technology. It's a longer lasting battery uh, uh, chemistry. Uh, it's, um, it has twice the energy density of a standard lithium ion. So the same capacity, uh, the, the same volume you can pass, uh, uh, you can pack twice the capacity. And same mass, you can also pack the, uh, twice the capacity. And uh, my biggest struggle uh, has been that from the beginning, it's about identifying a true and real solution from the noise. And especially in the battery uh, field, pretty much every week you have someone uh, announcing some type of major breakthrough. Uh, but finding something that actually works and then making it real is actually uh, uh, really difficult. Uh, and because it's, it's not just about fancy science, but also there's a lot of execution capability uh, and also working with other people and then making the scene really work and then make it real and practical at a mass scale. Uh, and also another struggle is it's finding support for an early stage technology that's not proven yet uh, and then competing with much larger companies uh, in the early stage, especially after the industry has seen a lot of failures. Uh, and that's been uh, a big struggle. In your opinion, given that, that experience and the challenges and struggles you faced, how do you think the Bright Mind Challenge might help an entrepreneur like yourself looking to bring technology to market? I think it's a call to action. Uh, there are a lot of scientists and entrepreneurs out there that are itching to make a difference, uh, but then they don't really know how to get started. And this challenge uh, helps you get started. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I think getting started is probably the most difficult part. Uh, and that's why DSN, with its uh, support uh, and, and uh, the support provided by a few other uh, incubators, can really help uh, people get started. 
And I hear you were a participant in the making of the film to launch the Bright Minds Challenge. Would you care to share a little bit about that experience? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was a, a fun experience. Uh, and uh, so we, we actually visited the old labs at MIT, the old uh, early stage incubators at A123, and also our new facility. So during the filming, it was nice to, to go through that whole experience. It's, it's like a, uh, four years of experience uh, uh, just contracted into one film. <laughs> And, and now posing a question to the both of you, and I'll start with you, Vlad, if you, if you would. Uh, out of this challenge, what would you expect the ideal outcome to be? Oh, wonderful question. Uh, what I hope is the challenge inspires, um, and as a result, provides solutions that we wouldn't have otherwise thought of. I think uh, one of the most powerful things about the challenge is the opportunity to bring people together. I often think of human friction as being the lead cause for innovation. And those innovations, at the end, become transformations that can positively affect the world. And Chi Chao? I agree. Uh, I think if one or two technologies uh, come out of this, uh, and they are developed by scientists, and they actually get turned into commercial products, then that'd be fantastic. And I think that would inspire many others around the world to continue doing this. And then many more ideas will get turned into commercial reality. Yeah, excellent. Uh, well, thank you to the both of you. Okay, thank Pleasure. you. Thank you. So to me, it's clear we need new innovations to address the global energy challenge. And the Bright Minds Challenge gives us the opportunity to find these innovations to advance solar and energy storage. So we're inviting you to be part of this renewable revolution. Join the Bright Mind Challenge for a cleaner, brighter future for all of us.